Hi guys, it's Ultra Mono. How's everyone doing? Good, good, good. I hope I look very tired today. Excuse me. Yeah, struggle is real. Today I wanted to do a video about 10 fragrances that feature honey. Honey. Trixie Mattel reference there, if you, if you know who she is. Anyway, there was a time in my life when I steered very clear of honey in perfumes. I think I'd maybe just sp smelled quite a few bad ones because honey in perfume if it's not done right can go very very wrong and not to sound crude but if, if it's done wrong it can kind of smell like urine and uh, I've smelled lots of perfumes with honey in them that go down that route shall we say or down that tract yeah that one didn't work anyway without further ado here are 10 fragrances that feature honey that I think are really great so number one on the list is Or du Sarai, and it's by Naomi Goodsir. I've been mentioning her quite a lot recently on my channel. I think I'm going to do an overview of her five perfumes because they're all fantastic. Anyway, this one is a huge tobacco. This one has honey in there as well, obviously. You've got candied oranges as well, mango, and a bit of coconut. So it's a huge gourmand with a big emphasis on tobacco. Very loud very smooth the honey in here is not massively prominent but you can feel it it's not like some of the other ones coming up where it's a gloopy syrupy in your face honey but it's definitely there and i recommend it if you like tobacco because it's a real beautiful smooth tobacco it's not kind of a woody leafy style tobacco everything in here is just smoothed out and it's almost like porcelain smooth um, but it's really great and it's hugely strong so you don't need much of it. I've worn it many times and I love it. So that's number one. Number two is a perfume that I absolutely love and no longer have it in my collection but still have very fond memories of it. It's the first perfume from Ely Saab and it's just called Le Parfum. When this came out it was an instant love for me. I even got it for my friend for her wedding day. It's just one of those beautiful perfumes that contains honey uh, but it's also mainly centered around orange blossom and jasmine so it's a white floral essentially there's a bit of patchouli in there as well but this one's great because orange blossom actually has honeyed facets just anyway in its nature so this one is kind of like they work in tandem and the honey just it emphasizes the the, the honeyness of orange blossom It's stunning, it's very, very elegant, um, affordable, and there's a million flankers of it now, but I always go back to the original one because every time I smell it, it's just, it's very pretty and such a great one. This one isn't all about honey, but this one is where honey plays a role and just emphasizes and enhances something that's kind of already there. It kind of fills the gaps, beautiful. The next one on the list I actually have on my arm, right now it's called honey oud and it's by floris i only tried this towards the end of last year um this one's kind of cool this one the honey is very prominent so you've got a combination of a couple of things here it's a bit ambery um you've got the honey and the oud in tandem and the oud in here isn't too crazy i mean it's medium level i would say it's not overly medicinal in your face or scary uh, the honey kind of tames it a bit but also there's a big rose note in here so it's a rose amber on the one hand but then it's also a honey oud on the other so i've got it here it's it's really nice it smells like something that montel might do if you've tried any of their perfumes it's that type of oud to me um i don't think it's real the oud it does certainly doesn't smell real to me but who knows nowadays so i wanted to put that one on there because honey and oud is a combination that's only done a few times i believe and i've only smelled this one nothing to compare it to so we'll see but i like this one anyway the next one on my list is absolutely amazing and uh one of my most recent acquisitions it's b by zoologist this little thing this is such a mood enhancing good mood provider when i smell this i'm just so so happy and it's just wonderful this is the in your face honey perfume from this list this is not only honey though a lot of ginger uh, beeswax royal jelly accord in here orange blossom 
uh, gosh, it's it smells a bit like toffee at the beginning, but the best part of this fragrance is the incense. Oh wow, to to put a, an incensey note in with this really thick, gloopy honey. This one's meant to be about being inside a beehive and feeling kind of overpowered by just claustrophobic honey thickness, and they really delivered it with this one. This is um, probably. Well, it's not my favourite honey perfume because that one's coming up, but uh, it's up there in my top five. So, yeah, Bee by Zoologist, just amazing. And it's one of the newer releases too, so check it out if you can. The next one is one that's popped up on a couple of my older videos, and it's Shergi by Serge Luton's. This is another tobacco one, actually, but this one features... It's, it's like a honey tobacco. This one's a bit more autumnal to my nose. It feels kind of slightly masculine at the beginning, but then it's not after that. This also has that kind of candied fruit element, so it's a bit... To me, it's, it's like syrupy cherry as well, and... Uh, it's got a kind of like a dried fruit type smell, a mixed dried fruit smell with lots of tobacco, and it's like a, a, a cherry hookah tobacco, but then honey also. This one's lovely. I haven't got much left of mine. I did actually decant quite a bit out for a friend though, so because she loves it and she wanted to get it. So yeah, Shergi by Serge Luton's. The next one is one I had a sample of a long time ago and actually really, really liked it. It's called Sweet Oriental Dream and it's by Montal. This one is really beautiful, but very, very strong. This one is a combination of honey, almond and vanilla. And it smells ambery to me, even though that they don't they don't say there's amber in there, but this is a big powdery, fluffy honey smell. Uh, and there's also quite a big dose of rose in this one as well. But this one I remember just being overwhelmed by this whack of powder and honey almond. Really, really nice. Very, very sweet. Not the type of thing I really wear anymore, but I wanted to put it on here because I remember it very clearly in my memory as being poof, like, like I say, like being punched in the face with a pillow. So that one is on the list too. The next one on the list is my favourite honey perfume ever, and not just honey, it's one of my favourite perfumes ever. I bang on about it all the time. It's kind of not for the faint-hearted though, and this one is Moth, another zoologist. I'm always going to feature a zoologist, guys, they're my favourite brand, I just can't help myself. Moth is a masterpiece, and I don't really say that very often about many perfumes. This was made by a Japanese perfumer, and this is a, a very dark twist on honey. The main notes in here are smokiness, dusky florals, lots of incense, honey, uh, there's oud as well in this one. Super unusual, absolutely stunning. Oh, it's not for everyone, this perfume. It's not something that people instantly like. But when I got this, when I when when I finally something clicked, I've never looked back. Totally unique and nothing in the world that I've smelled smells like this. So, moth. It's about a moth leaving its burrow, trying to find a mate in the middle of the night, but then dying in flames. So that's why it's got the smoky nuance. But yeah, smoky incense, honey, dusty flowers, amazing. The next one on the list is by Strangers Perfumery, and it's called Sangre Dolce. I personally am not a fan of this one. Uh, this isn't my top 10 honeys, it's just top honeys that I think are interesting. So this one is about Spain. This has a very unusual combination of notes that is tricky to wear, but my intrigue level, I, I keep going back to smell it. So this one is about Spain, sangria. This has rose water in it. It has uh, honeysuckle, so it feels honeysuckle in a floral way. Uh, there is, what else? Oh my gosh. There is maple syrup as well, so it's got this gourmand element, and then it's got civet as well, so you've got a wine-like boozy honey smell with f florals and animalic. And that's not a combination that I see very often, so I had to put Sangre Dolce on this list. Try it out, it's not, like I said, it's not super easy to understand at first, but it's, I would say this is like the ugly duckling of this video. It's really cool, but 
Mm, tricky one. The next one is a perfume that I previously owned and no longer do. It is called Scandal and it's by Jean-Paul Gaultier. Mrs. Legs. This one's a honey floral again. This one's one of the sweeter ones on the list. I mean, B is really sweet as well at first, but Scandal is, to me, it was kind of fuzzy. It was a fuzzy, honeyed floral that was just a little bit edgy. The honey made the perfume a bit skanky. Um, you know, not like a, a buzzy bee pretty honey. This one had a little bit of an edge to it. The texture was really interesting. C too sweet for me, but I appreciated it for what it was when I had it and wore it. This one also featured beeswax, as well as patchouli, orange blossom, and even licorice, I think, if my memory serves me correct. So yeah, it, it's, it's not as edgy as some of the other Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrances that, that are out there, but it's worth putting on this list, as it's one of the newer ones, and the flankers are already coming for this one, oh my gosh. But um, yeah, I really liked that one too, so I wanted to feature it on this list. And the last one on the list, I feel really bad for actually putting it on the list because it's discontinued and very hard to find. But I ha if I'm going to talk about honey perfumes, this perfume has to be on this list. If you ever see it anywhere for sale, please get it for me and I'll send you the money, okay? It's called Naja. And it's by a lady called Vero Kern. Her company uh, was called Vero Profumo. If you know this brand, you will know how amazing her perfumes are. Unfortunately, she passed away and her fragrances are no longer in production. But Naja, to me, was the star of the show of all of her perfumes. Wow. This one is a huge, huge honey perfume with lots of linden blossom, which is lime blossom, and tobacco as well. This one is in your face. We used to sell this at my shop, and when someone sprayed it in one corner, it just came over to the other corner. Massive, thick, gloopy, flowery honey. Tobacco gives it depth, and I really wish I could smell a vision it to you, or smell a YouTuber vision it to you guys right now. Um, just, I wish I could just get someone's show you it but it has to go on the list i have to honor vero kern and her amazing perfume art naja amazing so that's it guys i hope you guys like this video i hope you're staying safe really really stay safe and keep each other you know going at this difficult time i'm going to be saying that in most of my videos over the next coming weeks anyway guys i'm up to 1 trying to make the world smell better one video at a time i'll see you guys soon goodbye